Wait, any like, chance, any about a wrestling fan at all? Just a little bit, just Eat a little bit. All? <laughs> <laughs> what is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It is Denise Salcedo, and I am very excited because my guest for today, she is an icon in the world of wrestling. She is a four-time WWE champion, women's champion, and WWE Hall of Famer, Lita. What's up, Lita? Hi, how are you today? I'm doing phenomenal. You know, I got to tell you, I have been so excited to see you back in WWE, kind of do your thing. So I kind of want to kick off things with a broad question by asking you, you know, how do you feel right now, considering that you're back with WWE, you're heading off to Saudi Arabia to be in this big matchup against Becky Lynch at the Elimination Chamber? How are you feeling? I feel awesome. Like, I feel so good. And, um, I just, I never thought this would be my life at this point right now. <laughs> Well, you know, that's the thing too. It's like, you know, we haven't seen you wrestle, you know, well over 10 years, but you know, in a singles match in an official singles match, right. You know, right. you've done Royal rumble appearances, you've done a couple of tag team matches, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But this is something that, you know, not only is it with a competitor like Becky Lynch, but it's also for the raw women's championship at such a big stage, like elimination chamber. So in terms of like heading into the match itself, how do you feel in terms of, you know, ring work and all of that, what kind of preparation have you done leading up to this matchup so fortunately because so i had some lead time on royal rumble when they asked me to be part of that and i just took it while it's a multi-person match and can be as kind of fun or or quick as as need be i wanted to make the most of the opportunity and also just i was having fun training for it and so i was training pretty intensely and getting a lot of ring time in and then when i was asked to be um in the singles match with with Becky, it was like a natural progression to just carry on with what I was doing, but just refocus it instead of you know throwing people out over the top rope, more of traditional setting and getting my cardio good, rope running, um, and then I've been focusing on like watching Becky's matches and figuring out how to get out of all of her moves, reversals, and, and everything while brushing up all on my stuff but I, I mean like I'm having fun with it like just being in the ring I've been working with this indie group called Hood Slam and they've just been so welcoming giving me an open door and anything I want to try they're just like yeah yeah you know and and so I've been throwing people around over there they've been throwing me around and but like with this good balance where I'm like I, I want to work as hard as I can where I still feel good the next day so I can do it again um and so that that's been like the key i feel like training is all the way up until that point where i'm going to be too sore to do it again then the next day because i want as many like many training sessions as i can get until S saudi you're like, if I'm sore, you know, it's working, you know, you're getting things in. But Lita, I do have to ask you, you know, as you know, a performer, I can only imagine that, you know, when you've been taking such, you know, when you haven't been in the ring for quite a bit, I know that, you know, as humans, we sometimes have like doubts in our minds, or we sometimes might feel pressure from, you know, from the fans and whatnot. So do you feel like any pressure to, you know, put a certain performance on for people, especially uh, for those that kind of already know you for, you know, who you are in WWE, but also for those new fans that are, you know, getting to know you? Yeah, you bring up a good point. So I, I there's the fans that grew up with me. And then there's their kids or, you know, or like their, their current fans. And so it's like, I want to, I want both generations to be equally excited to watch my match. I want to feel good about my match, but um, also I do think that there's something magic about this time away from the ring where I've been not getting beat up at all and been very um, just kind of living a really active but healthy lifestyle and then combining that with the old Lita and that that comes back a lot quicker than I thought it would once I get in the ring I'm like oh I know how to do this so I you know or, or I'm kind of like tentatively walking through something on the first go around and then by the second one I'm like right back at it and then following it up and and um, it just really feels it feels right uh oh, I didn't mean to say. It. I didn't mean I like it feels say. right. Like, uh oh, <laughs> like the thing, right away you said it, and I thought it. Like your your Titantron like popped uh, into my yeah. head. 
<laughs> That's amazing. Uh, so let's rewind a little bit because we kind of touched, uh, you know, we kind of touched on the Royal Rumble. And, you know, when you were announced, it was like, okay, here we go. You were announced with a, with a bunch of other women that were going to be part of this rumble. But I'm looking at this and I'm like, hell yeah, like Lita's going to be in this. This is great. So how did the opportunity come about for, for you know, WWE to say, hey, like, you know, we want you to be part of the rumble. And how did you feel when they did, uh, you know, reach out to you? So the interesting thing is they they reached out a little before, maybe, I don't remember like how, how long, maybe a few weeks before they announced me. And yeah, I think it was just like, I, I was like, sure. I'll, I will give you a, as a female, I'll give you an insider right now. I was like, I have, I went to my stylist, my hairstylist and I was like, oh, I've got nothing going on right now. Cut bangs. No. And she was like, <laughs> and she was like, okay. And then I was like, the second I walked out, I was like, I, hate these things so much and then it was like three days later that johnny calls you he's like hey do you want to do the royal rumble and that was the first thing that popped in my head i was like no my bangs so anyways side note but so i'd um already just for fun been been training and just kind of jumping into the opportunity to do that um and then yeah it just kind of made sense to just keep my training going but then when they announced me ahead of things the reaction from the fans and the support from the fans have done amazing at just squashing any doubt or anxiety that I can do this in my head. And I didn't realize I needed that or that I reacted so strongly to that. I consider myself like, I know what I want. I know what I need. I'll go after that. But doesn't mean it's not scary sometimes or doesn't mean I don't have doubts. And the way the fans have been like, you can do this five time champion. Like I, you know, and I'm just like, I can do this five time champion, you know, and, and they've just been paramount with my confidence. And, um, and I feel like, and this is like not like, this is so cheesy, but it's so true. Like, I feel like I'm like, we're do like, we're going to go get that championship. Like, let's go do this thing. And I just feel like it's for anyone that's been a fan before anyone that's a fan now that never got to see me wrestle or anyone that's like doing some crazy ass thing that they have no business doing where they're like juggling a child and going to night school or going after a dream that they've like have no business going after I'm like let's go get this title so at this point, you know, when you're, you know, you're figuring out like, okay, I'm going to be in the rumble, you know, I, you know, they reached out to you ahead of time. Did you know that, Hey, there was going to be this possibility of you uh, essentially doing something more after the rumble and, you know, going into this match with Becky Lynch? Nope. <laughs> what was your reaction to that? Uh, they hit me at a great time, right out of after the match, literally like sweaty, like right, right coming out. How do you want, well, what do you think about facing Becky in a couple of weeks? And I was like, what? Yes. But oh, sh did I say yes? You know? And, and, and so it was like, I didn't have a chance to, to doubt or, or think about all the reasons I shouldn't face Becky or all of the reasons that I wouldn't be ready or what could go possibly wrong. All I thought of is what could go possibly right. Committed to that. And like, haven't looked back. Like I've never, ever since yes, I wasn't like, oh wait, what am I doing? No, no, no. I'm just like, no, 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 no. That, that time has passed. The time now is to think about how it's going to go good. That is just so crazy. Like, I can't even imagine like one second you're like, dang it, I shouldn't have gotten bangs, which by the way, they look great. They look good. I love that you did like the sweeping thing because it takes a long, a long time to get used to that stuff, you know? And next thing you know, you're in the rumble and now you're up in this, you know, upcoming big match with Becky Lynch. So I do also want to ask because, you know, in the rumble, you know, we got to see you go at it. Uh, you were number 26. You were in there for like about 10 minutes or so. Uh, you got to eliminate Mickey James, eventually eliminated by Charlotte Flair. But like I mentioned, we had a lot of different women that were, you know, included in the rumble. What was it like to be in there, you know, with not just current talent, but also, you know, talent from the past, et cetera? Yeah, so I kind of started the rumble with, oh, so I love the Bellas were the first first two that I touched, you know, and, and I have long history and like friendship with them straight over um, to to Mickey. And last match, my last match was with was with Mickey James and, and she beat me. So to to throw her out and 
she takes a hell of a DDT. And, you know, so that, that was really fun. And then from there, it was like transitioning. So it was like going from the past with like, say the, the Bellas and Mickey to the present with Charlotte and, and, and mixing it up with her a little bit. And then to the future, you know, I was like with Shotzi was in there and Rhea was there. And, and so it just really felt so cool of this like mixing of generations. And also, you know, we got to see Ronda Rousey get the win at the Royal Rumble. What are your thoughts on Ronda and how much of an impact do you think her presence, her presence makes, you know, in WWE, more specifically the women's division? Yeah, I mean, big, you, you can just, she like feels big, right? You know, and so it was like that Joan Jett song hits and everyone stops what they're doing and just looks back to the entrance. We all heard the rumors, but you don't know, you know, like until it happens, if it's true. And so to, to see Rhonda out there and she just kind of adds like this brings like pop culture, like, like, like larger than, than, than just the WWE because of her um, huge success in UFC and the boundaries that she broke in UFC and kind of combines those two industries into one mega attraction. You know, you feel that with the presence. You definitely do. And that's the cool thing. And I think that's one of the uh, things that made the Women's World Rumble so special is obviously, you know, you have all of these different women that you're a fan of or, you know, et cetera. And then you have Ronda Rousey, which is really, really cool. So also, like, I do want to ask because, you know, we're heading into this match with Becky Lynch at the Elimination Chamber. And, you know, it is taking place in Saudi Arabia. And I know you've already been asked about, you know, the criticisms that uh, you kind of had prior, uh, you know, with the relationship of WWE and Saudi Arabia. However, I you did mention that there are, you know, we, you're seeing women perform there. We've seen several matches there. Now for you, as somebody that has broken a lot of barriers in WWE, what does it mean now to say like, okay, like I'm going to take part of this event and I'm going to be one of the women wrestling now at that show? Yeah, I mean, it is, it's really huge culturally. Like, so when the relationship started with WWE and Saudi Arabia, yeah, I, I was one of the detractors going, well, wait a minute, if we're focusing so much on bringing women's wrestling up, why is this relationship being formed um, where women can't even wrestle, you know? And, and I was out there going, hey, 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 but here we are, you know? And not only have there now been women wrestling for the first time over in Saudi Arabia, the representation of women on this pay-per-view specifically with having the female elimination chamber and the women's title match, and by the way, Becky and I are on a billboard in Saudi Arabia for the first time, two women, um, or one woman. That's woman, incredible. Woman. Yeah. And I've spoken to the women that wrestled over there and they said, it's incredible. There's like tears in the eyes of these um, Saudi women that, that never thought they'd be able to see people be like two women be so powerful and be at an event live. So to be part, like there's just so like since Royal Rumble, just so many full circle moments for me personally and then so to be like a trailblazer on that front end of my career and then to have just a tiny be able like part of of this uh, progression as well in Saudi Arabia feels really really um, I'm honored it feels really special to be able to be been asked to be a part of it it's going to be, I'm assuming also an interesting experience for you to like get to experience the actual culture and the interaction with the people as well. So I can only imagine that's something that you're looking forward to as well. Yeah, you know me, like I want any new experience I can get. It said, uh, put, put me on everything. I just want to see and talk to as many people as I possibly can and soak in as much of somebody else's culture um, as possible while I'm there. Awesome. So my final question to you, Lita, obviously I have to ask you, if you were to defeat Becky Lynch, if you were to become Raw Women's Champion, what would that mean to you, not just as champion, but also, you know, already with everything that you have accomplished in WWE, what would it mean to the legacy of Lita? Well, I mean, I... It's, it's weird because I try not to get ahead of myself and I'm like, don't even think just you, you go in and give it a hundred percent and that's what you need to focus on. But I don't know, like it, it feels like this is what's supposed to happen. And it feels like it would be a pretty nice cherry on top of my career and maybe not even a cherry. Maybe it's like, maybe I order another Sunday. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. Like you said, it just feels right. 
it's it's awful but that's what goes there that's what goes yeah. there just feels right awesome well Lita I want to thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today I'm very much looking forward to your match at Elimination Chamber for everybody watching this is Denise Salcedo this is Lita we'll see you guys next time bye everyone